Hello and welcome back. It's time for the Aussies for Straya. It's Renegades versus CLG from North America trying to hold things down on what is kind of home turf. We're into the pistol already. Renegades starting on the CT side. You can see CLG are headed over towards A. There is a decoy in main, but FNS is in position. Hayes coming through the door as well with two in for support. So but the initial duels being won by CLG. 3-0 to zero at the moment. Only Yam and JKS to try and hold this for their team. JK is trying to find the flank, but he hasn't checked the corner properly, and that's going to be him down. All down to Yam now, the new boy from Immunity. Now on to the Renegade side, formerly known as Vox, for those of you who are unfamiliar. There is a... You can see Tarek has got the uh, mid-area, but Hayes going to shoot him straight in the face. That's a solid 1-0 here for CLG. So, uh, Threat was just saying he hopes Renegade doesn't don't go for the force buy. His mic is getting turned on in a minute as he's up to some shenanigans next to me. And indeed, they won't go for the force buy here. They are going for the eco. So, CLG. Oh, no. Oh, no. This going to be bad. So, it seems we have a Go TV issue. And, um... Well, well that was, we got around in, at least. Oh, no, we're back. We're good, we're good. Let's go. So, we've got uh, CLG headed for a fast eight potentially here. Again, we've got uh, Hayes moving slowly, just keeping an eye on any flanks coming in from mid. He'll be keeping an eye on the boost spot and uh, the T warehouse as well. But as is going to get the first kill, Sponge going to face, find the frag in A main. He found the frag through the door into Cutler as well. Only two plays remain for CLG already. We've got the mollies coming in to the quad boxes, but it's a bit too late as uh, there's only two plays left for CLG. Down to JKS now being faced in two directions at once, and the aim punch will be enough to for, to allow CLG to recover the round there. Go for the full force buy, and they still got three kills. This means they can buy P250s, maybe some seed sets again now, and if we're lucky, or if they're lucky, they can get two or three kills again, and once again, yeah, we seem to have so, yep. some connection issues. Yeah, hopefully they will be re resolved soon. For the most part, we had uh, a faultless first game. I mean, previous game, there was a, a bit of an issue later on, but it seems like we might actually have a disconnect here. So, uh, again, r this is game four of the evening. CLG 2-0 up at the moment, but uh, Renegade's looking strong, even on a simple eco here. Yeah, I completely agree. And just the decision-making to not go for the force buy, which is some something the European teams do a lot, and they rarely, rarely do it successfully, especially on a map like Cash. So it's uh, very, very nice to see a team like Renegade actually go for the yeah. half buy instead, just try to get two or three kills. And I wouldn't be surprised if they actually managed to do that again. And again, we are going to see Renegades twice in a row here. They're going to be up against CLG first, and then Envy in the following game. But as you can see, there is a bit of a connection issue with the server. Hopefully this will be, this will be resolved very soon. In the meantime, make sure you're following the channel, guys. Again, our next giveaway will be an Icarus, an Icarus Fell M4 for as an open raffle and an M4 Poseidon with a subscriber raffle being the Medusa or Medusa, whichever you like. Speaking of juice, Federer took out Murray in the tennis today, hmm. which is uh, bad if you're from the UK. Um, yeah. You're not from the UK, though. No. You're from Sweden. So, yay. <laughs> Great. All right, so um, I don't have any info as to what exactly is going on at the moment. Maybe we go for a break. Uh, they're trying to fix it at the moment. So we'll go for a break, guys, and hopefully come back with the rest of this match very shortly. See you soon. My body is ready. <coughs> so two rounds in two hours, and we are finally into round three. Renegades having lost the first two. We'll start uh, on the eco, of course, going for the boost towards A. And JKS seems to be stuck or something. I don't know, but he's down now. So, CLG heading over towards the B-bomb site with all of their players. Now this should be okay though for Renegades. If you stack the wrong site, you usually can just go for the exit kill. So, wouldn't be surprised if as soon as they hear the plant, they will just try to surround the B-site and go for the exit kill. So they got three kills the first eco round, I think. So if they like replayed it correctly, they should have gotten three kills on the second eco round now as well. So if they manage to get 
Uh, this is good, really good from them, going through T-spawn. And I think they're not going to peek until the bomb actually goes off. Yeah, they are literally covering all the avenues here. That's a smart smoke by CLG. But will it pay off? You can see Yam taking some pot shots. Havoc's gone down in the vent area, and uh, Azza's going to go to... I see, no, it's JKS going to follow up. So, a bit of damage done here by CLG. And uh, we've got the flank coming in from JKS, but he won't find the frag. Yam getting another one for his team. So a bit of damage done there. Yeah, still two kills, uh, considering they got three on the first one. This is still decent ecos from Renegades. And they will be able to buy a full set of nades on almost every player, just because they didn't go for that second round force buy. All right, so indeed, and that's very important, especially on maps like Cash, open maps where there are many jewels to be had. Initial flashbangs coming in around the map. We've got uh, Cutler headed over towards the squeaky door. Presence in A main from two CLG players. And uh, again, we've got FNS holding, just making sure that there's no CT boost coming in. He's playing very passively towards T spawn, covering T warehouse as well. Although, I think it might be Yami actually who's pushed into T warehouse. So we might have uh, a great flank coming in. He should hear the sound. He's seen Hayes, tagged him a little bit, but there's support coming in from Cutler. Cutler goes down. Hayes is still there, and he's, he might need support here actually. Yam unable to get the frag after all, but that will be some good information. Renegades controlling the A site now. CLG not having much luck, only the flanker has been killed so far. Just Hayes remaining, and uh, it'll be an instant trade there from Sponge after as uh, runs in backwards and clashes into Hayes. Hyper aggressive style here from Renegade right from the start. Yam just pushing into mid main. Didn't manage to get a second frag, but he did get one. And after that, it just looked like Seal did try to force themselves out on onto that A site. But I think there were three Renegade players waiting for them there. So very easy first weapon round there for Renegades. Okay, so round five has begun. We've got the nades coming in in both directions. Trying to uh, guess, second guess each other. FNS on the pistol. And that's all the money he had. So, <coughs> excuse me. CLG heading towards, well, I was going to say heading towards the A site, but the bomb seems to be going backwards and forward. It's not really obvious as to what they might be intending, although maybe it was impacted by that frag from Cutler. As I think they've executed some smokes, maybe, towards A. They were positioned outside the entrance to Squeaky as if they had. But uh, the bomb, in fact, is heading over towards the B bomb site where Hayes is currently lurking. FNS coming in for support as well, but again, he's only got the P250. Renegade's currently with three over towards the A bomb site, and uh, Tarek's already in position to stop the rotations through the vents. So this could, this should be a strong push from CLG. Sponge taking down Tarek towards A, and Renegade will start to rotate. Getting an inkling as to what might be going on here. Have CLG waited too long? JKS with the Molotov. Sponge rotating from A to B, getting taken down by JD JDM64. But the rest of the team are rotating. 3 versus 3 as Azza comes in from the back. We'll find uh, Hayes in the trade. And it will be 1 versus 1 now. Cutler on the site, going for the fake. And that's going to allow Havoc to get closer as he was a bit of a distance away. That smoke will start to disappear soon. But Havoc's going to just run straight in knowing the bomb's been planted. In fact, he took a step there, maybe to try and stop the plant from going down. Finds the angle onto Cutler, despite it being a very expensive round for Renegades. They get the round nonetheless. And the key to that round was that Tarek went down in middle. Tarek had that position under the boost where he can cover the vents. And if Tarek could have just stayed alive, it makes pushing be so much easier. Because if you're pushing up towards the B side, you never want to worry about a flanker through the vent. Because then you always have to leave one guy in checker. So if Tarek would have survived, I think CLG would have won this round. So Renegades close the gap to one. They get the full buyout once again, and they've put CLG on the eco. This is an important round. You can see the economy remaining uh, for Renegades. Now they have an opportunity here to take a round and take it with minimal damage, having far superior weaponry. But CLG with three flashes may be able to do some damage, and who knows what else. As a completely blind, it's going to get taken out with no frags. Havoc and Yam coming in to take three. So far, so good here for Renegade. Cutler and FNS, the only ones remaining. Yam trying to pistol him down, but he'll go down. So will Havoc. Just two Renegade players remaining. This has already been a far too expensive round for the Australian side. F Sponge finishing off Cutler through the door. No plant for CLG either. Three kills though, and uh, four people dying in the previous round for Renegade, which means they will be forced to an eco if they will lose this round. And I wonder if they 
Yeah, they will be able to buy a full set of nades. Actually, they have five Molotovs, and I I, I like that as each on this map. Gotta respect it. So, Renegades looking to continue their momentum, but CLG back on the bike. JDM on the AWP, and he is quite a prolific one with the big green gun. That smoke looks like it's going behind the red container. Am I right in that? Indeed it is, but there's a flank already from Renegades, and the bomb is still in main. This could be shut down immediately, but Yam, he's just going to chill out there for the time being. Most of flashes into the squeaky door, so he may be a game changer later on. Sponge moving into a more passive position as a Havoc going down as well. Sponge's position becomes even more important, but he can't find the frag. Yeah, maybe played on it, on it too late. He won't get any frags, and it's JKS versus the three remaining for CLG. They're heavily tagged. They've got a triangle of doom, but they're still jockeying for position, and he will choose to save. Yeah, he really needs to save his gun. They, are, they will be forced to almost double eco. Here and a very <laughs> risky play from Renegades going for the counter boost right away. Which in this certain particular round was the counter play to what CLG were doing as they went for the fast A execute. Yam, however, only managed to get one kill. So it's a bit unlucky. Maybe if they would have boosted, uh, let's say, three seconds later, he would have actually just been able to flank all of them in A main. Yeah, the problem was he, w he went all the way to Squeaky and uh, didn't push A main. If he did, then the bomb would have gone down and then Counter Logic Gaming would have been in a nasty, nasty position. But hindsight's 2020, and we can see the whole map, unlike Renegades. So CLG will take the lead once again and we'll see the War of Attrition will mean that Renegades are basically on the eco, only JKS with a gun surviving from the previous round. And less than 2k on each player for Renegade as well. They might even double eco now. JKS is some nice peak there, but it gets punished anyway by JDM who waits patiently for the frags to come in. So that's a bit of a basic uh, flash from JKS. You can actually throw the flash from that position on the girders in the ceiling, in the opposing corner, and it falls down nicely for a, uh, a peak with a self flashbang there. Cutler managing to get past the crack with only 24 HP. JKS, uh, again, he's the man with the gun here on the Renegade team. And uh, in the face at League of Oceania, he did once go an entire map without dying once, but this occasion he will do nothing with the M4 as it is a clean round for CLG. Yeah, and I think Renegade is going to go into eco once again. Yeah, double eco, and if you're in this position where it's only nine rounds into the game, they had two ecos after the pistol round, which means four out of the nine rounds will have been ecos for Renegade, so CLG with that perfect mounting control. So, things will continue here. Renegades on the double eco, of course. Just with a few pistols here and there. CLG moving into a main at the moment. And uh, we're having a run boost. That looks really weird on the minimap, I realize. But the run boost has come in, but the position has moved. Maybe it missed, actually. Because uh, they've exited the area straight away. Maybe they thought that CLG might have realized what's going on, but the flank is coming in here. But FNS is waiting for it. Only Yam and JKS remain. FNS to go down to JKS. And Yam again going for the uh, the squeaky door area. I'm not sure if it's open or not. If it's not, then his damage will be limited. Indeed, he'll have to hope that uh, a T opens that door sometime soon. JKS has picked up an AK, so he could go for a save. Looks like he's going to maybe try and go for some exits. And it will be down to Yam to hope that CLG open a door, although there is not much reason for him to do so. He doesn't have a kit. Oh, it's too late now. Tarek is holding the crack there. When you get to the car position where Tarek was headed, you can't hear the squeaky door open from there. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you can't hear it because I opt from there. And uh, you, have, you have to get somebody on short to look at the door every so often just to make sure they're not streaming onto the site un un undetected. That would be kind of a weird play. Just <laughs> open the door and walk out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's important for Tarek to hold that angle there. Alright, so the buy is going to come in once again here from the Renegade side. The AK that JKS has saved and the 4M4s. No orbs this time. No helmets onto Havoc or Yam, but it won't matter for the time being. As uh, CLG have the AKs and the AWP. Again, that's a very common uh, smoke there from the CTs as they move into position. But CLG, Shock and Awe coming in for FNS, two frags. And that should be the round for CLG already. Renegade's going for the save instantly. There's not much they can do in this position. Yeah, there's a terrible opening there for Renegades. Trying to go a bit aggressive there towards uh, the B storage. CLG just using one simple pop flash, pushing through the smoke, and FNS getting to enter frags, which means Renegades 
of course have to save their weapons and nothing they can do. What I liked is uh, Re Renegades' is smoke on towards B when you go up the ramp and then throw it off the wall is like fairly standard. You see that from so many different teams. But CLG seemed to have made like a hard counter for it. They had the flash coming into the smoke. Player was completely behind blind despite being behind the box. And uh, that was a free kill for CLG. Then the follow up was always going to happen be it a trade or otherwise. Yeah, I'm trying to fight to save his weapon there, but it uh, wasn't going to happen. And they have to go for, for their fifth eco out of ten rounds. That's not a good situation at all. Yeah, that's absolutely terrible. If you remove five rounds from CLG, or four eco so far, they actually only have four rounds, which means in pure weapon rounds, it's actually quite like a quite even game. Yeah, but uh, with a four-round deficit here for Renegades, and the fifth looking likely to be on the cards. They are not having a good CT side by any means. Renegades, they're one of the more drilled, tried and tested teams in Counter-Strike. So we can expect some T executes, but they'll need more than three rounds if they are to uh, have a proper fight, a proper scrap. Strayer! So, two CZs remaining. They can uh, maybe opt to try and find a, a nice exit position to punish these players as they come out. You can see CLG looking for the frags there, and indeed the frags they will find as the bomb finally goes down. Only Azza is left. FNS and Tarek got to be careful, they're quite tagged. That CZ can do some pretty nasty damage, but once again, the door, I suspect, will be closed. So it's going to be just a complete gamble should Azza choose to open the door. And there we go. So Cutler might have spotted something. I think he's raised the alarm. As we have a double peek waiting for him. And it'll be JDM faster on the trigger to take down Azza. Yeah, 8 to 3 now. And finally Renegade will have enough money to buy and lose this round. And yet be able to buy again. So... Or will they? They're actually quite low. Once again, I just looked at JKS money. So... Double up here for Renegade. Double AWP. And they're going to put the... Uh, they're going to have a 2-2-1 two, two, set up with only one towards the B bomb site. So where are these double orbs playing, actually? We can see the uh, CLG side looking to go for an A execute. So we can see Yam is in mid and Havoc is on the site. If they go for the quad smoke, which indeed they will, let's see if he's actually going to just completely rotate his position and abandon the site for now. So they've played a retake and he will use this gap in the smoke, but the bomb is headed over towards the B bomb site. There's still only one person, and that's JKS, probably the most dangerous man on the team, although Yam might have an argument about that, but let's see how long he can hold for. He might have realized what's going on, and there's a player on the site on A as well, cut of only 7 HP. He's going to get the rotators as it goes down. FNS falls to sponge, trades on both sides, 3 versus 2 now, as the bomb is outside B, but still Cutler in control of the A site for only an extra second as Havoc takes him down. Now, JDM has a task on his hands. He needs to entry with the Yorp. He needs to come around these corners. Scoped. And that's not going to be an easy task. JKS takes him down and Renegade survive with three players and the two Orps. Nice try there from CLG going for the simple A fake to the B push. However, the problem for CLG were that they just got stuck in checkers. They didn't push JKS. I think they CLG thought the rotation were, was closer than it actually was. So if they would have pushed the site right away towards JKS, I actually think they would have won that round. Yeah, maybe it was the fact that Cutler was on at the A site and made them think there were less plays there. But they were still in transit at the time. JDM getting the first frag onto Sponge there. Havoc trying to even things up, but Azza will steal the kill from him. Misses a shot in the door area, manages to escape with his life. Yeah, m might know where Hazed is. Hazed me may he need some assistance if Yam has realized where he is. Going for the crouch peak, but against the AWP, never advisable. Cutler taking down Havoc elsewhere. Three versus three now. With uh, still a minute on the clock for CLG to make a decision here. JKS waiting. And Azza finding the frag. JKS coming in for support. And will trade for Azza onto FNS. Another round in the bag for Renegades, but this time with two people surviving. And we have to keep an eye on uh, how many survive for the CTs. As we've seen the impact on their economy already. Um, 8 to 5. It's a decent score for Renegades, I would say, considering they have been on so many Ecos. Sealed, it looks like you're just going to go for a default player. The bomb is going towards A. Hayes is just going to put some pressure towards B, and I think it's going to be a slow round for CLG. 
Right, so CLG spread across the map almost in a line, and the same can be said for Renegades. Just leaving one person in mid now, 2 1 2 set up at the moment. JDM just holding the angle in case there's any aggression, and there has been much aggression from Renegade so far. Molly intervent. Or maybe suggest a B play. And the mid push will come in, and of course that will uh, be helpful for that as well. So, Renegades have chosen to abandon mid. In regards to B push, they are non believers. They have three towards A at the moment. And there's just a lurker towards B for now. Hazed with two. So maybe the gamble is not going to pay off here for Renegades as uh, we have presence in Vent going into checkers now and the bomb is headed in that direction as well. And again we've got uh, one CLG player just holding the Vent rotation for the CTs. You still have a player deep into the site. Down goes uh, JKS. Trades coming in but they're going in favour of CLG. And... As I will escape to the site for all of a second, Tar Tarek will take him down. And CLG looking pretty strong on the T side at the moment. Renegades can't get their economy off the ground. Two plays left and it seems like they might go for this. They can't really afford to lose any more rounds and this is the second last one. Havoc playing it very carefully indeed. And it seems that the option will be save. And just excellent play here from CLG. They, they're taking mid. They're leaving that player in mid that can hold the rotation through vents. Which means when they get into checkers from B storage, they know, okay, there's no one in vent. The only way they can rotate to the B sites is through high and low ramp. We just smoke those positions off, which leaves JKS all alone on the site. We just slowly push, push, him, push him down, and then we just go for the plant. It's a very simple but yet a super effective strat from CLG. Okay, so the final buy comes out for the CTs in the first half. And what state will it be in? Sponge reduced to just a 5-7 as they're on the FAMAS. AWP onto Yam, JKS and Havoc with M4s respectively. The nade's quite limited as well. The days of five Molotovs have gone. JDM getting the nice pick onto Sponge before he can make it over to the white box. That's a 5-7 down. Early advantage for CLG. This may force Renegades to be somewhat aggressive, but CLG are just waiting there. They've got the Lurker again, hazed, towards the B bomb site. While the rest of them are fairly fixed towards A. FNS keeping an eye on T Warehouse. And you can see Renegades starting to get a bit aggressive over towards B. And Hayes is challenging them, but he's down 7 HP now. JDM looking for the second opening here over towards the A site, and he finds it onto Havoc. Things will speed up now for CLG as they move onto the site. One player is up on the uh, walkway, but he's going to get taken down. That's Azza, JDM, with his uh, third frag of the round. Remaining two players have no choice but to go for it. One's going to car, one's going to short, and JDM finds number four. He'll look for number five now as his team will allow him to find the ace. JDM wiping out Renegades in the final round of the first half. Yeah, extremely nice round there from, from JDM, and I want to talk about the first kill he got there from mid. We see that entry pick like very often, even like in top games like this, and it still surprises me because if you're the CT just gonna w run to white box, you must know that if the T's have the best spawn, they can just watch that cross with the op. So usually what you want to do as CT is have the best spawn smoke mid right away. You have to have the best spawn, otherwise the T's will be, be before you. So still surprises me that a lot of players actually die to that op peak. Yep. So. Renegades with only five rounds on the board. Ooh, this is a must-win pistol round for them. Three Kevlars, smoke and a nade onto Havoc, smoke and a flash onto Sponge. Or Sponge, if you're Dan. They're going to get the opening frag onto the B-bombs like JKS, taking down Tarek. And uh, they've only got two smokes and there's no armor, uh, no Kevlar on the players who are alive on the CTs. I'm not sure if Tarek had one. Cutler Hayes coming in with three frags, holding down the B bomb site with a crossfire here. This is working out really well for the CTs. And holding things up will allow the full rotation from, this, from the team as the bomb is down. Picked up by Havoc. But now he is the only one left. And he is not long for this world. CLG surviving with four players. Yeah, they will go up to 11 to 5. I think we should see a force by here from Renegade. It's very effective to do it on this map. You can easily just go for a pop flash on either both the A or the B sites. But they're actually going to go for a half eco. This is very surprising. Which This is usually a tell that you you want to go for two ecos. Alright, so 
and see what Renegades can offer in this round. CLG playing passively towards A, playing the ranged game. They will fear these Tech Nines and they will play from the car area with some support should it be required. In fact, three people over in that direction. And again, there is uh, JKS towards the squeaky door. FNS is a bit closer. I don't know if he can hear it open from his position, but the uh, teammate next to him certainly can't. He's moving for a quick peek. Flash is coming into mid. What a dink there. Cutler going down. And that's going to be the pinch. And now the CTs towards Kara forced to move back. They're more aggressive position. And we should see a bomb plant. This Tech Nines are going bananas here for Renegades. The bomb needs to go down here. Yam is uh, trying to support his teammate. It's going to get a frag onto JDM. And then here comes the plant. Three versus two. The only issue for the T's is that most, if not all, of these weapons are a bit of a distance away. Completely unsafe for them to go for them, but they may not need them after all. Yam finding the headshot onto Hayes at P250, putting in great work. And Tarek with one HP, forced to run away, save his Kevlar and his helmet and his Famas. So, three players for uh, Renegades will survive, JKS, Havoc and Yam. And they will pick up the, uh, the bounty towards the car area as well. And it's very impressive that they managed to win that round considering they had no Kevlar. Uh, I actually think they just wanted to put some pressure on the economy there from CLG. Of course, you're always trying to win the round, but it's very unlikely you're going to do it with, without Kevlar. I think it was all thanks to that. I think it was Havoc who did the sick entry kill there in mid. Uh, the player, I, don't, I don't know who it was on the short, but I was thinking that as well. That was the turning point because it stopped the, players, the player with the MP7 who was ahead of the car from uh, being able to do anything. He had to move back. So all the chess pieces went to different areas. So we're seeing two AKs come out for the Renegades. Tarek with the FAMAS will continue. But he's going to be up against rifles and MP7s and uh, those MP7s will make bank for Renegades. This is a pretty bad situation for CLG within this particular round because four of their players don't have armor and those MP7s, $600 a kill will mean AWPs and other juicy items. So there's one more player on site to find, and that's going to be JDM. He will go down. Tarek finding two frags, but he is not long for this world. And that will be if FMS picked up, but there are two AKs on the floor. There's one of them, but the other one will be lost. And CLG should do another eco here. Yeah, this is good stuff from them. Just playing very disciplined. And this is some, something we have actually seen from a lot of teams from Australia. This is actually, or Australia, Australia and NA, this is actually up to go for more ecos than the European teams. So Renegades opting for five AKs with the four-round deficit they can't really afford. I thought maybe like if they choose to put an AWP on Yam, for example, they could throw one of the MP7s to him and he could continue with that and buy it later. But they don't really have the rounds to play around with for such plays. They only have three Molotovs, actually, as a picking off Cutler in mid, but uh, definitely going to want one for those sandbags. There isn't a play there at the moment, but uh, good practice is always good. And that's going to be a sneaky kill. Two kills to Tarek and the bomb and an AK. This is bad for Renegades. We've got Azza. He is only on 24 HP as well. FNS starting the charge as well. This is really bad for Renegades. There's only two CLG players left, but Havoc disappears. And again, look at Azza's health. There are so many guns all over the place for the remaining two CLG players to pick up that they can probably go for this. Down goes Azza again. Low health. And uh, he's gone. Now the CTs will rotate, pick up some bounty. And JKS, I don't think he's been spotted. I'm not entirely sure. Going for the fake here, as he doesn't know what's going on either. And I don't know if CLG will hit a plant from there. But indeed, it's going to be instant rotation. So JKS versus two of AKs. They don't have armor. He needs to position, position himself to make it as hard as possible for these two CTs to trade on him. And indeed, they're coming from opposite directions, which may be in his favor, actually. He's tapping one. There, he, there goes one. Going for the spray down. We'll find the other as well. Surviving with 14 HP. JKS, the clutch man for Renegades. Keeping them in the game. Nice clutch there from JKS. However, it is quite difficult to do that 2v1 with without Keller. The only thing JKS needs is to hit the first bullet. And then the it's very, very hard to aim when you're without Keller. And still a very nice eco from CLG. They will put some pressure on Renegades' economy. And it looks like they're going to opt to go for the 1-3-1. One, but with two guys on A instead, so a lot of pressure here on mid. So it's CLG with the AWP onto JDM64. Lots of Molotovs for Renegades on this round. Obviously the uh, the buy is still limited from CLG. 
the way things went. So, passive from Renegades. Let's see what Sponge is up to here. Do we have a short smoke coming in? I'm not entirely sure. I know Sponge, depending on the setup, Sponge has a short smoke. But it's uh, after they take mid. So, let's see the execute. They're going to go through mid. And Tarek and Cutler are both going to get frags from the vent and the sandbags respectively. So, this has not gone the way of Renegades. They're not going to get the pinch. There's a third play down. They could lose a fourth as well. JKS and Havoc, the only players remaining. They do have control of the bomb. Not anymore. Only Havoc now. Coming in from mid. And uh, that will be... A perfect round from CLG, not a single player lost. I think they threw the smokes from T-spawn over towards A, just so they could fast run out into mid. So it was almost like an A fake into a mid push. However, it's quite common to do the regular A execute, but to boost two players in mid, which is probably the reason why CLG left two players in mid. Which then meant Renegade just got demolished when they tried to push out. CLG all of a sudden looking so much stronger than they have in previous months. It's really, really great to see uh, North America rising from the, from the ashes of uh, late last year. So we're going to have a delay of about a minute. I'm guessing this is a tactical pause here from Renegades. So it shouldn't be too long. You know, this has been quite a struggle for them, actually. And losing... Uh, Renegades aren't a team where you expect them to just go for a T-push and lose without taking a single player with them. It's kind of kind of weird for them. So we'll see if they can bring things back into their favor once this break is over again. If you are just joining us, this is the ESWC stream. bit delayed because of some server crashes over in Canada, but things are up and running here once again. In terms of face it, we... We tried to do a lot of giveaways today. I guess we did, but they were mostly rubbish. But never mind. <laughs> Another news, we will have some nice giveaways at 650k, so make sure you're following the channel. We're going to be giving away an Icarus Fell and an M4A4 Poseidon. Those are open raffles. You do not need to be a subscriber to enter those. But if you are a sub, there will be a sub-only raffle of an AWP Medusa. All three weapons from the Gods and Monsters collection from the, pre the uh, most recent last update. But again... Uh, Renegade is going to be having a bit of a tactical chat. If you're on the Renegade side, do you have any uh, thoughts as to what's going on now? Suggestions? I, I mean, they've, the last round they tried to do some something funky. The A fake to a mid push. So maybe they will just try to fall back towards something more default like. It's, it's really hard to really counter what the opponents are doing when you're going for the tactical timeout because it's so obvious. If you're saying, okay, we're going to take a tactical timeout to discuss how we're going to counter you. Of course, your opponent is going to think about that and try to adapt. Okay, so Renegade's back. Four-round deficit here. Going for a super solid eco. We've got a smoke onto JKS. Two digs, And that's it. We'll see what the plan is. And the plan has got to be plant. We'll see if Sponge can run distraction here. Three people in mid at the moment. Excuse me, two people in mid. Cutler there with one of those stolen AKs. And... Uh, here we go. Gonna make it onto the site. But they need to get the plant in. This is all important for them. So, they're on the eco and they get the plant with uh, four people alive. CLG quite happy to go for the retake and allow them to plant, it seems. And those frags are coming in one by one. Only Azza remains. Azza soon to go down. Azza is down. So, the, uh, the goal has been achieved here by Renegades. Plant the bomb. And we'll see what they go with in the next round. Yeah, this upcoming round is probably what they planned during that timeout. So it's going to be interesting to see what they decide to do. I think they should do a default opening at least. Let's see where, where the bomb goes. It's usually the biggest tell to what they're going to do. Bomb. Five people towards A here, so they m it looks like they're going to do a straight up mid push here. Okay, so are we going to see the wall there? We've got some flashes coming in. They will... Uh Go in facing the other way. They like to just get that smoke in the middle. And this point, he's going to push through. Indeed, he's going to go straight to the short area. Find himself a frag. J uh, FNS goes down as well. Cutler's in the boost position, but now he's been exposed. Sponge going down, and the trade will come in from JKS. Everything has changed here for Renegades, and it's changed for the good. Tarek versus three with 13 HP. Let's have a quick look at the money here on his team. So, he has some options. Does he go for the save, or does he try and do as much damage as possible? With 13 HP, I'm sure he would prefer to uh, have more health while going for some frags. Indeed, he'll be spotted and easily finished off by Yap. 
And that's a very ballsy play from Renegades, just trying to go for that mid fast, uh, uh, fast mid push. In a meta where the 1-3-1, one one, which means you have three people aggressive in mid, is very popular, that can just mean you lose a round straight away. But lucky for them, Renegade or Sol Silgi only had one guy defensive there in connector, so it was an easy win there from Renegade. Do you think that was maybe related to the, the timeout pause? Yeah, it might, actually, uh, it might have been. Maybe they noticed that they didn't go for that mid aggression. Right, so we have a gap in a smoke, and JKS is going to have a quick look, but they'll move to more passive positions now after not getting an early advantage. Hazed will use the smoke to his own advantage while he can. But I expect he'll move back eventually as well. Nope, he's still going to be there and JKS will take him down. So, advantage Renegades. A minute 12 on the clock for them to play with. Cutler moving forward and I think we might see a boost. Indeed we will. But is anybody waiting for it from the, from the T side? No, that's going to be two players with nades in their hands. Taken down by Cutler. Taking the advantage straight back. Now Renegades for Desperation Molotov, which didn't even go off properly. Or, or maybe, it, yeah, it did actually. They all head over towards the B bomb site fairly quickly. Nades coming in, all standard stuff. Cutler coming in the vent area, and he'll find himself a third frag and the bomb. Almost the fourth. Yam surviving with 44 HP. JKS taking down Tarek, so they've got the bomb site for now. But it's a two versus two. JDM and FNS to try and retake. JDM 64 has a Molotov. They could use that to try and force a position for FNS to punish if he can get into position to throw it in the first place. Yeah, with two flashes and the HE. First pot shot coming in, and uh, you can see he's preparing for that Molotov. But can FNS get in position to do something about it? No, he goes down to JKS. Now there are two players on the site. Can they get the trade going in? Yam goes down to JDM, and JKS, they know where he is. Flying around the corner comes JDM, but he can't find the frag. JKS wondering if he should pick up the AK and uh, AWP, and I think the answer was no. And that was, that was a 2v4 for Renegade, which also forced a CLG to an eco. So if Renegade make this comeback happen, that will, will probably be the key round for them. And JKS getting that so crucial kill onto, I think it was uh, Tarek onto that site, who didn't man manage to pick up a single kill. Early peeking there from Yam to make sure CLG don't get into the positions that they would ideally like. Boost coming in onto the uh, A site while there will be two more towards B. JKS has gone down and Hayes has picked up the gun, finds the frag onto Azur as well. Yam taking down Tarek elsewhere. Now things get a bit crazy. There is one player in checkers for the Renegade side and that's going to cause the rotation. Yam going down so it's going to be uh, two versus three but I think CLG should be able to find themselves three rifles. So they've got two already. Third one shouldn't be too hard. Bit of a spray coming in from Havoc. Can't finish off JDM who survives with 34 HP. So the retake is on here for CLG. One short, one squeaky, one main. FNS goes down. There's only one AK for them to find now. And uh, JDM will also go down. Hazed. I think he protected where he is. Havoc versus Hazed. Havoc will win it for Renegades. Again, these are costly rounds. They're going down to the wire, but Renegades are catching up. And they also have been able to build up a small bank, however, for people dying there, which means they have to take from some of the money they actually banked, and they might... I don't... No, I don't think they're gonna equate if they lose this. Now let's see. CLG will actually go for the 1-3-1 one one now. Right, so four Molotovs on the Renegade side. Bit of war banging coming in through the shutters. Do some early damage to Tarek. This time, Renegades will be waiting for any boost from the CTs. You can see Sponge very alert for that one. Tarek playing close to the uh, squeaky... Squeaky area? The vent area in mid with Cutler looking from the other end, from the Zed Connector. Got those pod flashes coming in. But uh, Renegade's just looking for some aggression now, and Tarek looking for a boost. But from that position as well, he can hear them running around in A main, should they choose to make noise there. Although Havoc's taking pot shots, so that won't matter too much. One towards Squeaky here for Renegade's. Still spread out across the map between A to B. So... Things slowing down here as uh, Renegades maybe look for a pick. Currently looking for an overextension, but these smokes might start to come in now. So we're going to have pop flashes coming in to the smokes themselves. Forklift area completely smoked off apart from one gap which FNS puts his head in and his head is found by Azza, as is JDM64's. 
Flash comes in and Tag will get a free frag onto Abza. The trade is real. But man, disadvantage here. And again, they're still smoked off the site. Again, Forklift rendered useless. And Havoc will take presence there as those smokes disappear. Pop Flash comes in. He'll go for the peak. Won't find anything. And he will just hide again. No more flashes, though, for the Renegade side. But CLG, with uh, no significant map control, will opt for the save as Renegades close the gap to one round. And it's very important for CLG to save their weapons here. And we can see that from Renegade, who is already on the hunt here. Because if CLG w would lose all their weapons in this position, it means Renegade would, would probably go to 13-13. Well, CLG surviving with three players means that they can drop for their teammates. They'll be limited on nades across the board. Actually, there's a, there's a, that's a reasonable amount of nades. Only Tarek really lacking four Molotovs they've still managed to get out and helmets. FNS though, just with the CZ, so it looks like they've opted for nades rather than two drops. Which is probably smart. Smoke's coming into a main, but there is a significant gap in those smokes. The T's have to be paranoid that maybe there's a CT behind it. But uh, it's more likely that's just a lazily thrown smoke grenade. You can throw perfect nades from certain areas, like the car, although you have to stop and do it. So if you're trying to rush to a certain position, then you're going to have to take a gamble on your nade landing correctly. But uh, Renegades will hold passive angles towards B, not go for the straight peak lines just yet. Yeah, I'm trying to identify if anybody's in mid. Got a team Molotov coming in to try and flush out any CTs. They will confirm that that area is empty. Sponge going deeper towards the B bomb site, and he's leading with the bomb actually. Havoc taking down a uh, pop flash peak from FNS, the only player who didn't have a rifle. He'll go for the aggressive play, and uh, CLG will lose a man, but not much money. JDM going to take down Havoc. Bomb headed over towards B, and there are three CTs, two on the site. And one just behind the smoke. Got to be careful for a push here. But the CLG side are going down one by one. Only Cutler remaining. He's taken down Yam. Put himself in a two versus one situation. Bomb yet to get planted. So he can get himself a 1v1 here if he moves quickly. He'll mark off from above and come in from below. As I get to make it over to the checkers area. Cutler looking for him. I'm not sure if he saw a glimpse of him there. But he's hunting for the 1v1. He will find it. But Azar will be the one to take the frag. And we're tied at 13-13, and I just want to go back to that round where the score was 13-9, where CLG had a 4v2, and they would force Renegade to an eco, which meant they would get to 15 rounds. And yes, JKS getting three kills in that clutch, so a very sick comeback here from Renegade. Cutler performing well, 21-14. to And uh, JKS always up there with the frags, currently second for his team. So I think it's time for CLG's tactical pause as they discuss how they can stop the bleed, how they can stop the leak. And they must stop the mid-presence from Renegades. And they must also realize that Renegades, even though they did that one fast mid-push, can take mid late in the round. Because we saw one round that CLG actually played that one through one but then after around like 20, 30 seconds, they started to do aggression. Th they didn't wait for, for the actual push from Renegades, which meant they did lose players before they actually decided to take mid. So what I want to see from them is just play the one through one, leave three players in mid. If Renegades, let's say they go for a simple A execute, you can just boost, uh, counter boost them, try to go for the flank. There's a lot of things you can do. Go for the A retake. And if they go B, you can just have a fast rotation through the vent. So we are ready to resume here, and resume we will. 13 to 13, CLG going for the buy. It's going to be a limited buy. You can see the helmet's lacking, but it doesn't matter versus five AKs. And uh, again, there's a reasonable, semi-reasonable amount of nades, but it's uh, significantly less than the previous round. This time it will be Tarek going with the 5.7, as opposed to FNS on the previous occasion, where he went for that peak into A main to no avail. Initial nades coming in from the CT side. Left with two Molotovs, one HE, the rest flashbangs. They'll go for the late boost as well, but Cutler's going to fall off. And uh, I think he's just going to straight up try it again. We've got Havoc moving in an A main just now, and they're going to fail it a second time. And that's going to be less than ideal. I can't see a third time coming. Havoc moving up in A main. They've got one into Squeaky, have the Renegades. Again, the uh, it's Sponge, who's just keeping an eye on the boost. But... Uh, in previous rounds, we saw Tarek over 
towards the T side of mid, but we they're going to play two on uh, short, in fact, and, and I rotate. Actually, I actually think they're going to go for the late mid take again. It looks like they're lining up for an A execute, but I wouldn't be surprised if they just went for the boost here towards mid. Okay, so we've got the Molotovs coming in, and indeed they're moving away from the A bomb site almost all together. Just Havoc holding things there. Going to go for the push, taken down immediately, and that's three, almost four players kept busy over towards A, but will the push into B come fast enough? It seems it will. Yam up in the boost spot, waiting for the rotation, just like Tarek was, but this time he's boosted a nice one tap onto Cutler, and that's going to be the four versus two that Renegades were looking for. Now only one, JDM, last man standing, going to have to save his M4 that he just picked up for his FAMAS. And just awesome play here from Renegade. They, they know they have control of A main, which means they have shown presence towards A, and therefore CLG would most likely have two or three players towards that A site, and throwing the smokes over towards A just ensures that, okay, this is going to be two or three towards that A site. Then we're just going to go for the fast mid boost, try to go through the vents, and go for that B split. So excellent play there from Renegades. But once again, I really want to see the one through one from CLG. Okay, so JDM doing what he can to uh, hold on to this weapon. Nade's coming in, and he will be forced away from the nade into the flames. Nowhere to run or hide. But he did some good damage there, but it will matter little as you see the money left over for Renegades once their buy comes in. And look at the situation CLG are in. However, Force Buys, Ecos are dangerous when uh, you are the T's, especially over to the A site. We've seen so many times the 5 7 has put in great work on the default plant spot. And there will be three CLG players over towards A. Looks like we might have a pop flash peak coming in as uh, they are facing away, but Renegades seem prepared. If you look at Cutler's position. He's got two flashes and a smoke and a diffuse kit. And where his teammates are facing backwards. Oh, straight into the nades. And again, just a peek from Havoc is enough information. He hasn't been touched yet. Hayes falls to JKS elsewhere as the bomb moves in towards the B bomb site. That Molotov will not force that JDM, and he will find the 5-7 uh, frag as Havoc tries to run distraction elsewhere. Cutler and FNS with two fast frags onto Yam and JKS. Suddenly we're in a 2 versus 2 here. JDM, the only one surviving once again with uh, all of 4 HP. And I don't know if he's going for the push here. No, he's going to go for the save. 1 versus 2 with 4 HP, not going to be easy, especially with trades, etc. So he'll opt to save the AK as Renegades move to match points. And just imagine that CLG was actually leading with 13 to 9. Was this 13 to 9? Can we check the... Let's see... Yeah, 13 to 9. Or oh, 13 to 8, even. That's even more impressive. Yeah, Renegades showing strength of character to bring this back and take the lead. A two round lead, a match point lead now. And again, even if they lose this round, the pressure will continue on to CLG. CLG going all in, of course. And look at the buy they have. Double orbs coming out. Tarek going to pick one up as well. Still continuing to uh, find money for the Molotovs. And even a taser on to Cutler. He's bringing the kitchen sink. Yam getting tagged down to 44 HP. Nefinis maybe could have afforded uh, more grenades and not the helmet versus... The inevitable AKs here of the Renegade side. As a finding Cutler with the Molotov as well. Getting traded by Hayes, however. Yeah, I'm taking more damage through the smoke down to 22 now. 4 versus 4 though, which means advantage Renegades. But they've got to be careful. JDM f holding very sneaky angles indeed. Into the crack of Squeaky, but there's nobody in Squeaky. Havoc is in A main. CLG rotating players. We've got uh, Hayes. He was going to go towards B, but he's going to cover mid. And uh, CLG will put two towards the A site. Just a lurker havoc. Got to be careful though, because there is somebody close to main who could pop in. But those are risky plays that CLG maybe can't afford now. Yeah, I've got to be careful from that Molotov. He's a bomb carrier as well with only 22 HP. If he goes down in a flurry of kills for both teams, then that could be around for CLG. Sponge taking down FNS, looking for some information. JDM going to find a trade. Tarek on the B bomb site going to find Yam. He'll go down to the flames. Two versus two now, as the bomb has been spotted, and Renegades will need to move fast. That Molotov will make it harder for them to plant it in the checkers area, both on the site, as they have to defend from JDM and Hazed. Flashbangs galore. 
No nades for the Renegade side. JDM has a kit as well, so they've got time to try and do this. Sees a peak, goes for the, goes for the shot, finds a tag onto Havoc. As we have more movement, F, uh, Hayes coming in. Hayes will go down. It's two versus one now. Molotov's coming onto the site. JDM, he could do this. They're both heavily tagged. They're going to try and trade. Havoc can't afford to peak, but he will do it eventually, and it will be 16 to 13. A humongous comeback by Renegades. Yeah, they were down 13 to 8, and as we talked about earlier, that key round where Renegade managed to win that 4v2 towards that B side, JKS getting three kills that round, I think, was the key. That just changed everything. They had such a difficult start on, on their CT side. It was horrible. I thought they, they were pretty much done for, but never count these guys out. That's just why they've been picked up by uh, an international organization, because they are a very good team indeed. And credit to CLG, they're showing so much improvement, but uh, they will be going down in their first match of the day. So we're going to go into another Renegades match next. That's going to be up against Envy. So we will go to a break while that gets set up over in Montreal. So uh, get a drink, guys, and we will see you in a few minutes. <laughs> 